Hello everybody, my name is George Leakeus and I'm a primary care physician here in Midtown Manhattan. If you're getting this video, you may in fact be a member of the Lexington Medical Family or know someone who is a member of the Lexington Medical Family and I wanted to go over with you what we are doing here to keep everybody safe. So first of all, in just a few seconds, uh, we all now know what a coronavirus is, but let me remind people, coronaviruses have been around since the 1960s. This is not so new, it's simply a new strain of this virus, and we think it came from a particular type of animal. Either way, it has been labeled COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2, and that is a novel coronavirus. But we have seen coronaviruses before. They often lead to colds all the way up to pneumonias. Uh, the SARS epidemic in 2002 was in the coronavirus family, and we are learning more about coronaviruses at all times. But this is not necessarily a brand new problem. It's just that this particular virus, while not as deadly as some other strains of coronavirus, has been spreading very quickly and, of course, has led to all of this alarm. The coronavirus envelope it looks like a crown, that's why it's called that, has a propensity for the lungs. So that is exactly why you have to avoid touching your mouth, eyes, nose, and face. Because it's not a problem that you touch COVID-19 on a surface, it's a problem that it gets into your lungs where it wants to live. Therefore, please do take extra precautions to avoid doing that. And if everybody practiced respiratory etiquette, like sneezing into their elbows, like throwing away tissues after they sneeze rather than keeping tissues in their purses or pockets to be used again, like using non-essential finger appendages to open doors or press buttons, elevators, pump, pump gas, etc., then maybe we would be able to limit the contact of the COVID-19 virus on many surfaces. There's a lot we don't know about this virus. It probably lives on some surfaces more than others. Uh, and it probably lives for anywhere from two hours, even up to two days, perhaps. The harder the surface, like a metal countertop, the more it can live. But it has to live in droplets. This is not a virus that is in the air. It is a virus that comes out of our mouths when we cough, and it stays in a droplet that then goes on a surface that you then touch your eyes, your mouth, or your nose. So if everybody's socially distanced, if everybody stayed home as much as is possible, and if everybody used appropriate hand and respiratory etiquette, we would and will be able to get this under control. Of course, many of us will get it. Maybe most of us will get it. That actually may be fine. This virus is not killing people left and right, although there are certain groups that are more at risk than others for a bad outcome. But the more of us that get it, it's called herd immunity, the less easy it will be to spread it because more people will have had it and they will not become vectors to spreading it. So in some ways, there is something to be said for if you have a mild course, in many ways you're lucky, it's behind you, and hopefully you will not get it again. If you were to get it again, it would probably be a very mild case, if at all. Most people with coronavirus, as has been said by our mayor and governor here in New York, do not get any symptoms. They are asymptomatic. The problem with that is that they may be carriers and contaminating areas even though they feel fine. So everybody should act like they are at high risk and everyone around them is at high risk, even with your family members. That is how we can get this under control. It seems that of the people that are in the hospital, 98% of them will have fevers. A fever is specifically above 100.4, it is not 99, it is not 100.0. A fever is above 100.4 and most people, 98% of them, with this virus in the hospital have complained of fevers. 75 or so percent have also complained of cough and 25% have complained of sputum in the cough. But runny nose, sneezing and congestion is more likely to be a sign of a virus or a common cold. Body aches and fevers is very often a sign of the flu, although symptoms can look similar. The point of that story is that many people have been calling or coming to the office for symptoms that if it weren't for coronavirus, they wouldn't even be concerned. So in an attempt to decrease the number of patients that call and we don't have great answers for them except stay tight and let's see what happens. Please do remember that if you treated yourself, 
like you or those around you are at high risk. Symptoms like a scratchy throat, a runny nose, a sneeze, or a cough can be watched, albeit watched like you will become positive. In the meantime, do not smoke, do not vape, Continue to socially distance yourself, wash your hands, wash your face. Wash your hands first, then wash your face. And at the end of the day, don't forget that more people will be dying of heart disease and high blood pressure and uncontrolled other medical conditions if they don't continue to take their health seriously. So during this time here at Lexington Medical, we will be staying open. We're manning the phones and I want to thank my staff for tirelessly manning these phones. We have answered over 800 calls in the past three days, all of them very, very similar. But we, while open, do not want you coming to the doctor's office to get a physical or a non-essential visit because there is no reason to risk contaminating yourself or exposing yourself on the way to the office or here at our office where we have diagnosed four people as being COVID-19 positive. Incidentally, all of those people, including a 30-year-old woman who was pregnant, were better by the time we gave her or them their results, which were about four days later. So the good news is we should get past this. The bad news is those of us who aren't taking it seriously will contribute to the delay of getting past this and of course may contribute to spreading it. So don't come to the doctor's office or even come into this building without calling us first. Many of our calls we are able to triage without people actually coming in and we are finding alternative means for testing people without exposing this building. I would like to remind everybody that the elderly are the, and those with medical conditions that are serious and cause immunosuppression, which does not mean that I had a cold last week or that I had strep throat a month ago, but the elderly and those who are immunocompromised and those who do not have their diabetes or blood pressure under control are at highest risk. Please do protect them even if that means going shopping for them. Please allow them to stay home and please notify a doctor or us for that matter if somebody you think is in need of assistance. You should not go to the hospital unless you think you need oxygen. Of course, if there's other reasons for you to go to the hospital, that's fine. But if you are a potential COVID-19 positive patient, the hospital is the worst place for you to be as you will contaminate potentially other people, including the medical staff. And you may get contaminated if you were negative by the same people, only to be told, even when positive, go home. There is nothing that you need to do except treat this like a bad cold, including Tylenol and wait to get better. If while staying at home you get worse, by all means, reconsider. Call us, consider going to the hospital if you think you need oxygen or to be on a ventilator. Don't be embarrassed to call us, but don't call us because you're scared. Although we understand, ask yourself, would you be scared if it wasn't for COVID-19? Many patients are already better and yet they're still scared and they're still wondering if they were positive and the fear is leading them to do things that might put them at risk rather than staying home and getting healthy. Thank you again. We'll try to shoot out some more videos that answer some frequently asked questions. Again, we are staying open so that we can serve our patients and encourage you to call, not to be embarrassed to call, but to think about your questions before you call. If it's a symptom that's only for one or two days or a symptom that goes away with Tylenol, wait. It is just not necessary to call if you're lucky, you will be positive and get over it without even experiencing anything more than a mild cold. If you're unlucky and things get worse, of course, let's talk about it. Thank you again. My name is George Leakeus, and I'm a primary care doctor here at Lexington Medical Associates in Midtown Manhattan. And again, we are here for you and ask that you stay healthy by staying home and socially distancing. Thank you.